Welcome class. Today, we're going to look at something that we call the Columbian Exchange. Um, and to get you to see how the Columbian Exchange is relevant to you, what I want you to do is I want you to take an opportunity right now and just think about your, your favorite meal. Put together your favorite meal. You know, you, one entree, one side, one dessert, one drink. Just put it all together right now, okay? I can tell you one of my favorite meals, you give me a solid hamburger, all the toppings, sweet potato fries, sweet tea, and, and red velvet cake. That's probably somewhere in there, depending on what day of the week you ask me that. It's probably one of my favorite meals. So now that you have your favorite meal in your mind, keep that in the back of your mind as we go through what we call the Columbian Exchange. So first we're going to look at what was the Columbian Exchange. Technology will work correctly. This is uh, a voyage between the old world and the new world um, that, that turns into more than just a exploration. Uh, the old world again being Europe, because remember the Europeans came here, and this is new to them, and so they labeled this the new world. And so it's a the Columbian Exchange ends up being a transfer of people, products, and ideas um, that start to get exchanged between the two hemispheres, so between Europe and the new world, uh, and it's going back and forth. Um, now, keep in mind, and, and we're going to get into this, some of these transfers are not voluntary. Some of these are forced transfers um, from one hemisphere to the next. Um, it had, but the climate exchange does have positive and negative effects. That's one of the things that we're going to look at. So like I said before, you got the old world over here, that being Europe and Africa. And this is what prior to the age of exploration and the finding of the Americas is what they thought this was it, this is all there was. Then you got the New World, this is all the unfounded, untapped um, resources um, in the New World over here on this side. And so these two sides start to intermix, they start to come together. Um, and so what is it called when two cultures mix? Uh, these can be, when they mix everything, trade ideas, food, music, tradition, technology, culture, this is all called cultural diffusion. Cultural diffusion. This is a key term. This is when two groups or two cultures mix trade ideas, food, music, traditions. They mix their two cultures together. And the mixing of that culture, cultural diffusion. All right? And so I have this here for you because... Let's go back to that meal that I was talking about, that, that favorite meal that I had you, I, I asked you right here at the beginning, put together your favorite meal, one side, one entree, etc. Looking at this, this is what came just food-wise between the two hemispheres during the Columbian Exchange. Uh, coming from the Americas to Europe, you got, there's, there's my sweet potato. So I'd have been able to have my, my sweet potato fries, I think. I think I would have been able to have my sweet potato fries. And that came, again, you got tobacco, turkey, pineapple, peanuts, all of that coming from the New World to Europe. So these are all Europe, Africa, and Asia, actually. And these are all new flavors and, and foods that are coming over to the old world, as they claim. But then what you got coming over here are livestock, so so no burgers. Those of us that that love a, a good hamburger, a good cheeseburger every now and then, pre-Columbian exchange, that wasn't us. We're eating turkey burgers. Sorry, uh, bananas, peaches, look, coffee, and, and and those that that know me, I'm not a nice person if I don't get my coffee. So. It's a good thing that I didn't live in this time period. But you got onions, which are, you use to, to, to flavor lots of foods now. The honeybee, so no honey over here in the New World. 
uh, wheat, bread. There goes my, there goes my red velvet cane, sugar cane. There goes my sweet tea. What? Now you just got to drink regular tea or, 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 or what? I mean, I, I, I don't know why people do that, but apparently people do drink unsweet tea. And it sounds like the most foul thing ever. But so you, you can you can see that there's this mixture of goods going back and forth and back and forth. And so think about that, that meal that you put together. When you have time, look at this chart, pause the video for me to and, and figure out how much of your meal has to change if you're on either side. Remember, if I'm over here in Europe, yeah, I can have my, you know, I can have my, my, my burger, but I can't have sweet potato fries. I can't even have regular fries. I ain't no tomato on my burger. So think about that. As, if you have time, pause the video so that you can really see how the Columbian Exchange, just on food, um, changed culture as we know it today. All right, so what you're going to do on page three, we should be on page three of your notebook. I want you to create a teacher. It's exactly what it sounds like. Just right here. Come on. Teacher. Okay? And we're going to put the positives on one side. We're going to put the negative on the other side. I'll give you a heads up. There's just three of them. There's just three of them. Now, somewhere on page three, you can put down that definition of cultural diffusion if you're going to need it uh, to remember. But So, looking at just the positives that come out of the Columbian Exchange, you, you get new trade. New goods for both sides, you know. Food. I love food. I'm, that's why I gotta run so much. <laughs> um, new relationships start to emerge between the two sides. New partnerships. Um, you get new relationships and partnerships throughout trade, but this is this is on a whole nother level. This is cross globe. This is global partnerships and global trade between the sides, and then. The third positive is created wealth for Europeans. And I want you I want you to focus and understand very specifically that it creates wealth for Europeans. And we're about to look at we're gonna look at the the trade on a much broader scale, and you're gonna see why Europe tends to be the only group that benefits from the Columbian Exchange, and why even today some of these groups are, are still feeling the effects, these negative effects of the Columbian Exchange. Negative number one, uh, it kills many people. Europe brings a whole bunch of diseases with them to the New World that um, the, the Native Americans that were here were never exposed to, and so they, their bodies have never built an immunity or a buildup to battle back or to fight against um, these diseases. And so those diseases end up killing a bunch of people. Um, and it allows those diseases to start to spread very easily. And as those diseases are spreading from one place to another, they start to mutate. They start to become stronger, uh, harder to fight viruses. And then number three is a big one. It leads to slavery. It leads to slavery because if we go back, oh, no, right, here we go. if we go back to this, um, Europe and Asia, some of these crops they, they start to want on very large scales. Tobacco, they really, really want tobacco, and so when when they start to need people to work on these farms to grow tobacco on these broad scales. And that's how slavery gets introduced to the new world because they want people to work these farms and they want to work them at a, at a lower cost. So that again, looking at positive number three, it can create wealth for Europeans. So again, looking at this T-chart, positives, you know, corn comes from one side, pigs come from the other, pumpkins on one side. Asparagus, sugar coming from Europe. This again, this is the old world 
This is the new world. So this is what the new world is sending over here. This is what the old world is sending over here. So if any of your meals included bacon, you can thank the club in exchange for bacon. Um, horses. Those of you that love horses. Peanuts come from one side. Pears, fruit, turkey, uh, coffee. Or that's actually cocoa. I'm sorry. That's cocoa, not coffee. Um, bananas come from Europe. Sheep, cows, tomatoes from the new world. And then death. Just lots of death. But they get green beans. And then, yeah, you get that forced labor down there um, as well. And so that brings us to the triangle trade. Now, this doesn't really look much like a triangle. But on page four of your notebook, I want you to, we're going to kind of try and draw out something similar to the triangle trade. And so... To, to help you better understand what's going on, all right? And so over here, you got the new world, right? This is the new world on this side. Okay? You got the new world over here, very poorly drawn new world, but you get the point, all right? Over here, you got Europe. All right, you got Europe over there. Then you got the African continent right here. In Madagascar. Jeremy forgets it. But this is Africa. All right. And again, you have that imaginary line that goes down the middle that divides New World from Old World. You got the New World over here, Old World over there. And so. Just like we talked about, coming from the New World to Europe. New World to Europe. You have foods. So you have things like sugar. Uh, tobacco. And natural resources. And for those that don't know, natural resources are things that you can use to create other things. So take a, a pencil, for example. A pencil is made out of wood for the pencil itself, gran uh, granite for the lead. It's no longer made out of lead, but they never changed the word. And rubber for the eraser. Well, the wood, the granite, and the rubber are all natural resources that when put together create a pencil. These are goods that can be used to create other things. So you got sugar, you got tobacco, you got natural resources, all coming from the New World and going to Europe. Then, going from Europe to Africa, from Europe to Africa, you have textiles or clothes. You got textiles, you got alcohol. And you got guns. Now, what's important to understand here is that the Europeans are colonizing the New World. So this stuff that they're getting, Europe isn't having to pay top price for this stuff. And the big one is natural resources because they're taking cotton, for example, which is a natural resources, a natural resource, creating the textiles that they're then selling to Africa. So they're in Korea. If you're paying less money and then, and then Africa has to pay more money, Europe is making money off this deal. And then they're not having to pay as much because their colonies are over here. So again, Europe is making the most money out of that deal. Alcohol is a big one because once alcohol is introduced to the continent of Africa, they're able to keep using it and using it and using it. Uh, to essentially try to get these tribal leaders to drink more so that they can, again, take advantage of negotiations. Uh, and then guns. Guns. Europe is not giving Africa their best guns. They're just not. Um, they're giving them older model guns. Uh, for example, the, the PS5 is about to come out, right? 
And so once the PS5 comes out, the PS4 is, is obsolete. It's an old system. But in, in, if, in the sake of video games, Europe isn't even trading Africa PS4s. They're trading Africa PS2s. And so that allows them to still have the advantage in firepower should these two continents, for whatever reason, go to war. So just because they're getting textile alcohol and guns, it doesn't mean that Europe doesn't have an ulterior motive in the process. And then coming from Africa to the New World, you have slaves. And again, it's a revolving cycle because these slaves are coming to work in these fields that are creating these natural resources that Europe is making things out of. And what's often not talked about is, is what's going on the other way. So Europe is taking these natural resources and then selling textiles back to the new world, continuing to make money until the new world develops their own. But still, they're taking these natural resources, they're creating things, and, and making money off of that trade back and forth itself. But what's also going on is in this trade right here, Africa is sending their natural resources. They're sending their natural resources back to Europe. And what ends up happening is that Africa gets all of their natural resources depleted to the point that Still today, they're feeling the effects because they don't have the natural resources that they need to develop at the rate that Europe developed or at the rate that the New World developed because Europe kind of set up colonies over here, which helped America to develop faster. And then they're sending their some of their greatest generations over here to the New World to, again, continue to help Europe to make money. And this whole process right here is called the triangle trade. Because it makes somewhat of a triangle. The triangle trade, and again, this should be on page four of your notebook. But the triangle trade is the whole process. This is the whole process. This portion right here That portion is known as the Middle Passage. And the Middle Passage is a forced journey from Africa to the New York world, where all of these thousands upon thousands of, of Africans are stuffed into the bottoms of ships and stacked like cargo, literally laying on top of one another. And millions of Millions of Africans died in the Middle Passage alone. And this is before they ever get to the New World. And then once they're brought to the New World, they're taken off these ships and cleaned up and put on auction blocks and sold into slavery. And we'll delve further into slavery in the Americas in, in the next couple of videos. But for now... Make sure that you remember that this whole process is called the Triangle Trade or the Columbian Exchange. This section is called the Middle Passage. All right. Thanks. Have a great day.